Lesson 13 has two parts. Part A is on three-digit divisors. Now we've done some problems with two-digit divisors, and that's the only difference here. Now they have three digits. You still have to move the decimal place over in the divisor to get rid of the decimal and make it an integer value, a whole number value. Look at that example 13.1 that they have there on page 41, and it says divide 0.41623 by 0.0215. So to get rid of the decimal in the divisor there, the 0.0215, you have to move the decimal over four places to the right to make it a whole number. And on the inside, you'd have to move it four places as well, so that makes the inside 4162.300. And then you just do your division on that. They don't have any practice problems on this, and then problem 19 in that lesson, it's actually the same problem as example 13.1, so when you're doing your homework, if you can just use that to check your work there. I'm going to do problem 20 in lesson 14. You don't have to flip over to that if you don't want to. Just watch on the board and, and look at the problem, and you can write that down and work it with me. So I'm doing problem 20 in lesson 14, and it's... 612.13 divided by 0.603. Now they say to round the answer to two decimal places, so that means we need at least three decimal places on our answer, so we'll know if we need to round up or leave it the same. So we'll write 0.603 out here, and then put the 612 0.13 on the inside of the division symbol there. We need to move that decimal place over three spots, right? One, two, three. So on the inside, we need to move it over one, two, three as well. That means we'll add another zero there. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this. If you just want to move the decimal over, you can, but I'll rewrite it 603 and then 6. 1, 2, 1, 3, 0. Okay, so 603, that would go into 612 one time. So we could put a 1 up here in the quotient. Bring a 603 down. Subtract that and you get 9. Carry the 1 down from above. 603 goes into 91 zero times. It would go into 913. It would go into that one time. So we can subtract that by 603. That's going to equal 310. Bring the zero down. 600 times 5 is 3,000. So 603 times 5 that would just be 3,015, so that'll go in five times. Okay, subtract those two. 85 would be the result there. Now we need to put a decimal place here and here. Put a zero there. And so we'd carry a zero down. 603 goes into 851 time and put a 603 here, subtract those two, you get 247, have another zero out here that we can bring down, 2470, 600 times 4 is 2400, so that'll go into 2470 four times. And I'm kind of running out of room here, let me just go up here and continue the math. 2470 minus 2400, that will just equal 70. And we could carry another zero down. 603 would go into that one time. And so that's our third digit there. So our answer, remember we were supposed to round to two decimal places? Our answer would be 1015.14.
Okay, let's go back and do part B of this lesson. Back on page 42, it's on multiplication word problems. Let's read what it says there at the very beginning of the lesson. Some word problems require that numbers be multiplied to find the answer. These word problems sometimes contain the word product. Many of them contain the word times used in a phrase such as five times as many. So those are keywords. In any word problem, you look for keywords to help you set up the problem and to work it and find a solution. Let's do the practice problem that they have there. Inflation caused the price of everything to increase. The price of an item after inflation was four times the product before or the price before inflation. If an item cost five dollars and sixty seven cents before inflation, what did it cost after inflation? So four times the price before inflation. That's a key phrase there. The price now is four times it what it was before inflation. And they told you that an item cost five sixty seven before inflation. So to find out what it cost after inflation, you just multiply that by four. And so you could do it in the vertical format here. 567 times 4. Remember, you do multiplication. You ignore the decimal place while you're doing that and put it back in at the end. 7 times 4 is 28. So carry a 2. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 2 would be 26. Carry another 2. 5 times 4 is 20. Plus 2 is 22. So put the decimal place right there. You could put a dollar sign out front here. 2268 would be the answer. If inflation increased everything four times, the four times 567 would be 2268. Let's do another problem on that. Let's do problem number one. Let's go ahead and read that. Look for keywords in the word problem. The pinball wizard set a new record on a pinball machine. Her new record score was 26 times the previous high score of 79,864 points. What was her new record score? Okay, so we're just going to multiply 79,864 by 26 because it's 26 times that amount. So we can do the vertical format here, 79,864 times 26. Start with the 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Carry a 2. 6 times 6 is 36. Plus 2 is 38. Carry a 3. 8 times 6 is 48. Plus a 3 is 51. So carry a 5. 9 times 6 is 54. Plus 9 is 59. I'm sorry, plus 5 is 59. Carry a 5. 7 times 6 is 42. Plus 5 is 47. Now go to the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry a 1 there. 8 times 2 is 16. Plus 1 is 17. Carry another 1. 9 times 2 is 18 plus 1 is 19. Carry another 1. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Add these up. 4, 6, carry a 1. 1 plus 2 is 3, plus that 1 is 4. 9 plus 7 is 16, so you carry a 1. Another 7 plus 9, that's 16, plus 1 is 17, carry a 1. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 1 is 10, so that's a 0 there, carry a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And so your answer then is 2,076,464. So just remember when you're doing word problems, try not to get distracted by words that aren't important. I mean, it didn't really matter that they were playing pinball or whatever it was in that problem. Uh, they could have been playing hockey or tennis or anything else. Those are words that don't matter. Uh, what matters is keywords like times. That tells you you're going to do multiplication. 
Okay, well that's all for lesson 13.